while some teams come to the racetrack with the goal of a championship or six-figure prize purse. Others come with no hope of such success. They ride to build a foundation for the future, a foundation for themselves or for others. The Cycle Trader Rock River Yamaha team is one of them. When it first originally started, it was literally just to provide riders a truck to ride out of. There wasn't any support financially with bikes or parts. They literally supplied everything themselves. Christina was gracious enough to let me basically roll my privateer bike on the semi. How about Alex Martin? The cycle trainer, Rock River Yamaha rider. Alex has taken it to another level, leading right now at Glen Helen. 2015 was really what ultimately catapulted me to winning races and I would contribute a lot of it to their team and their attitude. The Cycle Trader Rock River Yamaha team has been huge in uh, getting me to the next level. Three years we worked together and I really feel like he helped the team get to where at least it was a few years ago. He was at the point obviously he needed to earn money. We didn't have money to pay him, so he goes. The greatest struggle that teams like Rock River face in competing with motorcycle factory teams and satellite teams is racing with budgets that are a fraction of what their competitors use. You have to have a motor guy, suspension guy, practice mechanics, race mechanics, pay a rider. You need a lot of money actually to produce the results on the weekend. We pay for their flights, we pay for their motorcycles, we pay for their parts, we pay for their race gas, their entry fees, everything. So it could be up to $150,000 per rider that we spend to get these guys racing. The first four years, I never even got a paycheck. The Cycle Trader team, they've got some strong up and comers on that team, want to turn some heads as they try to pave their way into a factory ride. I can't knock any of our sponsors. They are good to us, they're great to us. They go over and above, it's the industry. The big guys get it and the little guys just have to kind of fight their way to the top. Like many who have raced for Rock River Yamaha, Brandon Hartraft won several championships while racing for their team as an amateur. And in 2018, the team placed their hopes in his ability to adapt his skills to the professional ranks as well. Brand new, breaker in ride. Last year, I was on the amateur team for Rock River, and I won two national titles in A class. So I was making a name for myself pretty big, because me and Justin Cooper, we were just sweeping the A class, and then I got hurt. Justin and Brandon, they were, I would say, dead even in speed, but Brandon's last year, he only got to show himself at two races, and then he tore his knee and was out for the year. It sucks, as I mean, you put so much time and effort to win, and then it just, like that, is gone. Brandon Hartraff, he's a new guy that nobody looked at him, and we're like, hey man, we'd like to bring you on and try to help you. The Cycle Trader team, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Christina believes in me, Scott, there's a lot of people that think I have potential to be on the podium breed champion in the future. Hayden Melross immigrated to the United States in 2015 from Australia, hoping to establish a motocross career among the best riders in the world. Hayden's top 10 finish in the 2018 Supercross season was the best of his career, which has brought him his first opportunity to race the outdoors in years. Uh, about four or five weeks ago, I got a call from Christina to race the entire Pro Motocross Series, and uh, I was excited that I got an opportunity to race here and be the person that doesn't just get forgotten, you know, I can keep improving and keep trying to be in the spotlight. For me, it's 110% every time, otherwise my visas won't get renewed and I'm back to Australia. Round one at Hangtown was the first test of the 2018 outdoor season for the Cycle Trader Yamaha team. Unlike many factory riders who have multi-year contracts or reputations that will all but guarantee them a job in the coming seasons, Hayden and Brandon will be fighting for their future livelihood at every race. Christina's mission will be directing their focus away from this and towards the details they can improve. You have to relax. You make a mistake, you have to keep going. And he's got to charge Once through. you get to the finish line, then you can take a breathe lap. Yeah. The next three races are probably the toughest races for my guys because they have never raced these tracks. They're going to be dealing with elements they've never raced before. Card sideways, we're about to have a gate drop. And they're off! Getting out of here safely, top 10 for my guys would be awesome. 
and just moving on to the East Coast where, I'm gonna say this because I'm an East Coast guy, that's where the real racing is. It's just survival of the fittest here in California. There's some young men that are certainly opening up some eyes. Hartraft in that number 13 spot, a strong moto number one. Hartraft would have a solid start to the season, finishing inside the top 15 and battling with some of the 250 class fastest racers. Hayden Melross, on the other hand, lost control on lap seven of Moto One and was thrown from his bike into a steel cable, holding up a sponsor banner. They said that it looked like he landed with his arms, with his like, chest out, maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. What a tough break. These guys need to finish well to get paid because they are riding for free. They need to finish in the top 20 to make some purse money or it's all been for naught. He's for sure not racing second moto, no go. Hayden's shoulder injury would keep him from racing the next three nationals. For many teams trying to deliver race results for their sponsors, an injured rider has no value and must be replaced. But for Scott and Christina, this mentality goes against their mission of providing a solid foundation for struggling riders trying to build a career. Having the time to rehab his shoulder without the fear of losing his job may be the grace Hayden needs to redeem his season. I don't envy anybody that's on a factory team that have the money. I don't think they have the love that our team has for our riders. You know, for them, they look at a rider as, you're an athlete, we expect this out of you because we pay you this. Our team is, you're our athlete. If you can do good, great. If you're hurt, we don't pressure them. There's no pressure in our tent for anything. I'm not here to just try to get something. I want to see you do well with us and move on as if we were a stepping stone. That's what kind of makes it all worth it for me. I enjoy doing that to see them achieve. The teams like the Cycle Trader team, I give them that most respect because we need teams that can help the guys that need an opportunity. They do help the sport quite a bit, and I hope that the riders appreciate the help that they get. It's a lot better than putting your bike in a pickup and trying to do it yourself. For the last couple of years, I've had deals to go to Australia and race the Australian Supercross. Instead of me just staying there and being content and continuing to make an income, I guess I kind of invested into myself. It's like, okay, let's put all the money in my USA account and let's come race. It's challenging changing $30,000 in Australian and watching the conversion rate come out at $18,000, $19,000 American. But do I want to make it in Australia or do I want to make it on an international scale and be this next Chad Reed? That is the definition of successful to me. Fortunately for the Cycle Trader Rock River race team, Hayden returned before Brandon Hartraft suffered a shoulder injury of his own, ending his season. Next year, the team has no financial means to hire Brandon Hartraft or Hayden Melrose for 2019, which will likely leave them with little to show for their efforts once again. Really for me, it was the drive that Alex Martin had that made me continue. Really in that year, honestly, I was ready to quit. The motivation and the determination that that kid had really made me realize, okay, I want to do this for him because He's so determined, and I have that in me, I'm not ready to quit either. I have an 18-year-old daughter, and when I started this venture, she was in the fifth grade. I really felt bad. I felt guilty that I was gonna be leaving on the weekends, and that point where I almost quit before 2014, she was like, Mom, you're my biggest role model. So she's probably been my biggest supporter. Um, <laughs> Now we're on 15th place at the moment. If he stays there, that would be a strong finish so far this year. I don't feel like a little guy out there because I look at some of those guys that we race and we beat some of those teams and we just keep trying because that's what racing is all about. What I'm able to do, whether it's to the riders, to the mechanics, it really makes that all worthwhile and seeing their dreams come true. I'm proud of you. I, I think today was such a huge improvement. Your last lap, I mean, we're like right there with the top five guys. I would love to get a championship. You know, when Alex first got that first podium, it really kind of said, you know what, we're not so far off. I strive to be that legit team. I want to be a threat to these guys. I know there's so much more to what we're capable of. 
you know, until I feel like, okay, we've met that capacity, I don't, I don't think it'll ever be done.